Good morning. Man, so good to see you guys. Man, worship team, you guys are just on fire. Can we put our hands together for that worship team? Man, John, Mark, and those guys are doing a wonderful job. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Whether you're here in person or watching online, we are so glad that you chose to worship with us today. If this is your first time, we do want to say thank you so much for visiting with us. And like Sarah said, if you would, just take a moment, fill out that information card in the seat back pocket in front of you, or you can text the number on the screen. That way we can send you some information. We would really appreciate it. Can we give our first-time guests another huge round of applause, church? Come on. We are so glad that you all chose to worship with us today. If you haven't checked in on Facebook yet, take a moment and do that real quick, please. You can share a quote, share uh, anything that jumps out to you to make sure you tag beyond that. How many of this is a simple way to help us get the word out what God's doing here at Reach? Our mission as a church is this. We want to reach and equip as many people as we can for Jesus Christ. Did you know this simple tool of just simply checking in can help us do exactly that? So take just a moment, check in if you haven't done that. Amen? Well, we kicked off a brand new series two weeks ago that we are calling Moving Forward. Let's look at the screens uh, to see the verse that we're using to build this series around. Then I want to do a quick recap of the first two weeks. Philippians 3.13 says this. No, dear brothers and sisters, I am still not all I should be. Can anybody say amen to that? But I'm bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. Turn to your neighbor and say one thing. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to forget the past. And we're going to move forward to what lies ahead. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. Paul tells us exactly what we're to do if we want our lives to look different. He says that we need to forget our past and we begin to move forward. I told you in my opinion there's only two reasons we think about our past. Number one, we should learn from our mistakes. You're doing yourself a disservice and those closest to you if you go through a difficult time and you don't learn anything from it. Proverbs 24, 32 says this, I looked at this, thought about it, and this is what I, how many we can all learn something? Even when we go through difficult times, there's things that we can learn. The second reason to think about our past is this, number two, remember God's faithfulness. If you're going to think about your past, remember God's faithfulness. 1 Samuel 17, 36 says this, I have killed both a lion and a bear, and as your servant, I will kill this uncircumcised Philistine too. How many know the lion and the bear was just simply a reminder to David of how faithful God had been to him? And you need to remind yourself as you move into 2021 just how faithful God has been to you. Amen? Mm. Last week I told you if you wanted 2021 to look differently, then you must change the way that you think. Proverbs 23, 7 says this, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. In my opinion, one of the greatest battlefields you will ever face is the one in your mind. If you can learn to think differently, then your life can look different. Let me say that again. Some of you need to write that down. If you can learn to think differently, then your life can look different. Proverbs 4.23 says this, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Turn to your neighbor and say, what are you thinking about? Don't answer that. (laughs) Whatever you do, don't answer that question. If you were gone the last couple weeks or serving and reach kids, I want to encourage you to go back to our YouTube channel and watch any of these previous messages because we we don't have time to recap the whole thing. We just want to give you the highlight. So if you were gone, make sure you go back and watch those. Can somebody say amen to that? Let's look at the screens for the verse I want to use for today's message. Do you guys mind standing up as we read the word of God today? I want to make sure you guys are awake this morning. You're ready to shout amen. Amen. Who's ready to shout this morning? I'm going to remind you that in a minute. Proverbs 18.21 says this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit. And this last part smacked me this week as I was studying for this. Look what it says. We will bear the consequences of our words. We're going to bear the consequences of our words. The title of today's message, if you're taking notes, which I encourage you to do, is this. Sticks and stones. Sticks and stones. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. 
God, we thank you as we can come into this place, we can experience you. And Father, I think that your presence is here. Your presence is for those who are watching online this morning. And Father, for the next few moments, God, as we open up your word, God, I pray that you'd open up our hearts. God, I pray that you would use me to speak truths that are found in your word. God, our desire of this as we come in to leave different than we came. So, Father, we thank you for that. In Christ's name. And everybody said? Amen. Well, before you're seated, find three people, do a fist bump, and say, sticks and stones. Say, sticks and stones. How many of you guys are old enough like me to remember the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but... Sticks and stones may break your bones, but... How many of you are young enough, you have no idea what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Look at that. For the first time in the history of our church, we all agree on something. Let's pray and go home. <laughs> this is a miracle. You don't think God works miracles today? You all just were a part of one. Everybody in the place is aware of sticks and stones. One more time. Sticks and stones. But your words will never hurt me. I can remember saying this as a kid. But as I've gotten older, I've realized it's not true. It's just simply not true. If you want your life to look different, then you're going to have to change the way that you talk. Research shows that the average person speaks around 16,000 words a day. I wonder where you fall in that category. Clay, do you think you would get 16,000 words a day? Do you even hit 1,600? <laughs> You're like, good morning. He's like, morning. <laughs> good night, Clay. Night. His word count is probably less than 50. <laughs> Stop or I'll shoot. When, I guess when you carry a gun, you don't have to use many words, right? <laughs> the bottom line is that. Huh? 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 You maybe pay attention. 16,000 words a day is what the average person speaks on a daily basis. I wonder how many of those words that we're speaking are producing life or killing it. Isn't that what Proverbs says? We throw that back up there, Greg. What does it say? Death and life are in the power of your tongue. And you're going to eat the fruit of it. If you don't like what you're eating, you need to look at what you're speaking. Huh? If you don't like what you're eating, then you need to look at what you're speaking. How many of you have found this? There's consequences to your words. Where's my married people at? You just can't say whatever you want to your spouse. How many of you have children? How many know your words affect your children powerfully? Huh? There's consequences to your words. Are you speaking life over your marriage? Are you speaking life over your children? Are you speaking life over your situations? What are you speaking? You're using words. Now my question is, what are you saying? Because apparently our words have power in them. Right? Right? I was thinking about this, and I didn't, I apologize. This is not going to be on the screens for you. I was just thinking about this before I came up here. Um, it's found in Mark 11, and it's a pretty familiar story in the Bible if you grew up. Um, if you want to turn to your Bibles, if you guys bring them or bring your phones out and look at Mark 11. Does anybody ever carry a Bible anymore, by the way? If you have an actual Bible, will you lift it up? Look at that. That's some actual Bibles. If you use your phone for your Bible, will you lift it up? Let me see your phone. <laughs> There we go. I, I mean, I'm not, I ain't throwing shade. It's okay. You can use either one as long as you use it, right? 
Mark 11, I was thinking about this again. Please forgive me. I didn't have time to throw it up there for Greg and those guys. I was down there. We're talking about the power of our words, right? Uh, it's Mark 11. Will you come hold this, John Mark, so I can read this? <laughs> That's what it's come to, y'all. Oh, my goodness. I even bought the big print Bible. Uh, it's the fig tree. The next day as he left Bethany, Jesus was feeling hungry. Anybody fasting and feeling that right now? Mm, sorry, I won't talk about it. He noticed a leafy fig tree in the distance, so he walked over to see if there was any fruit on it. But there was none. You know, as I read that, I thought, I wonder if he does the same thing to us. I'll go over here and talk to these guys. I said, I wonder when Jesus looks at our lives if he wonders where the fruit is. We'll do that another week, okay? We'll do it another week. You're not ready for that. But there was none. Only leaves for it wasn't yet the season for bearing figs. Jesus hit the fig tree with a rock. I know if you're with me, we're at 14 now. He, he didn't do anything but to the fig tree, but what? Spoke to it. That's what my Bible says. It says Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Now, what are we talking about this morning? There's power, life, and death in our words, right? Jesus is living this out right in front of us. Jesus spoke to the fig tree saying, no one will ever free, eat fruit from you again. And the disciples overheard him. If you go down to verse 20, so the next day in the morning they passed by the fig tree that Jesus spoke to and it was completely withered from the roots up. Peter remembered and said to him, teacher, look, the fig tree you cursed, what are we talking about? They have power of life or what? What did Jesus do to that fig tree? Hmm. You think our words are powerful? What do you say? That fig tree you curse is now all shriveled up and dead. Jesus replied, let the faith of God be in you. Listen to the truth I speak to you. If someone says to this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown in the midst of the sea and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. Amen. That's Jesus. That's red letters in your Bible, right? He's telling us there's power in the tongue. I don't think most Christians understand just how powerful the words that we speak are. I read something this week that jumped out to me that I want to share with you that maybe not as revolutionary it is for you as it was for me. But check this out. Matthew 12 says this, verses 36 and 37. You can be sure of this. Again, this is Jesus speaking to us. And how many know when Jesus opened up a statement that you can be sure of this, then how many know that you can be sure of this? Turn to your neighbor and say, you can be sure of this. You can be sure of this, when the day of judgment comes, everyone will be held accountable for every, say every. Say it like you really mean it, for every careless word he has spoken. Now, I don't know the exact value of a word, but I do know this. A word apparently is so much means so much to God that he is recording every single one of them. Every word that you speak is being recorded. Don't worry about the NSA. You need to be worrying about what you're saying because Jesus is recording it, y'all. Some of you conspiracy theorists out there? Huh? You're worried about on your phone? I tell people... I feel sorry for the guy who's assigned to me if that's the case. Because what a boring eight-hour shift he has. Every careless word that you speak. Huh. That's a sobering thought, y'all. Because how many know we can be careless with our words? 
Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it didn't draft you guys as much as it grabbed me. So let's look at why the words we speak are so important. You guys ready? Number one, you're taking notes. Words determine the course of your lives. Words determine, determine the course of our lives. Your life is headed in a certain direction, whether it's good or bad, or possibly a little mixture of both, and how many know that your words have helped set that course? Let me prove it to you. James 3 says this. We all fell in many areas. Look what jumped out at me. We all fell in many areas. Look what it says there. But especially with what? Do you see the theme that Jesus is telling us over and over again? How many of we can all mess up? How many mess ups do we have in the house? All right, the rest of you can raise your hand because you're lying, so you just messed up. <laughs> we all mess up. He said, but we, we especially mess up with our words. Out of those 16,000 words you speak, how many of them are careless? It's rhetorical. Yet if we're able to bridle the words that we say are powerful enough to control ourselves in every way, that means our character is mature and fully developed. Verse 3, horses have bits and bridles in their mouths so that we can what? And remember, what's the point? Our words determine the course of our lives. So he says here, a bit and a bridle in a horse's mouth will guide their large bodies. Verse 4, in the same way with mighty ships, though they are massive and driven by fierce winds, yet they are steered by a tiny rudder at the direction of the person at the helm. You are that boat in your life. If you don't like the way that your life is going, then I'd ask you to look at the words that you're speaking. Tony, I, I think it's good too. <laughs> Verse 5, and so the tongue is a small part of the body, yet it carries great power. Just think of how a small flame can set a huge forest ablaze. Are you awake? Huh? I'll teach you guys to get quiet on me. That was a, that's a signal we do. Anytime I push down with my right hand, they hit that button, nose button. <laughs> Thanks, Jason, for noticing I did that. <laughs> Next time if I do this, go ahead and do it again. And check out verse 6. This one's an interesting one. And the tongue is a fire. Huh. I'm going to come back to that one. If you don't like where certain areas of your life look, and look at what you're saying about those areas. Think of the words that you're speaking as seeds that you're planting. Let me say that again. The words that you're speaking are simply words that you're planting. At some point, you're going to eat the fruit from what you've been sowing. Huh? I believe that's what the writer of Proverbs was telling us when we read Proverbs 18.21. Let's look at it one more time together. Remember, we're talking about the words you speak are seeds that you're planting. Remember, at some point you're going to eat what you've been sowing. Isn't that what he said here? Death and life and the power of the tongue and those who love it and indulge it will what? <laughs> Pay attention, y'all. If you guys don't start saying amen, I'm going to make him do it every few seconds. I ain't kidding. Okay, Tony's saving you. Jason, thanks for being on it this morning. I appreciate it. What does it say? Well, eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. So what he's saying is this. When you speak something out, you're giving life to what you're saying. If you continue to speak it, eventually that can become a reality in your life. Amen. 
Man, that makes me think about my careless words. I've got to be careful what I say to my wife, my kids, my friends, my job. Because apparently all the words that I speak have the power to bring life or to bring Or death. I told you last week that you can't have a positive life with a negative mind. It's the same thing when it comes to our words. You can't talk negative and expect to live a positive life. Man, I am always sick. We always struggle financially. Are you are there speaking something into existence? It may be true that you don't feel well. But you know, you can speak facts better than you can speak truth. And what's a fact? Jesus says he come and he bore those sicknesses and diseases. You may be facing challenges in your body, but I want to encourage you to declare the truth that you can find in God's word over your situation. I'm not saying that money's not tight in your life right now. That is probably very true for several of us in here right now. But you need to begin to declare the truth of God that he says, I will supply every one of your needs. Huh? We control what we think. We control what we say. I know they like to blame the devil for so many things, but I tell you what, I don't think it's him. Could it be that little thing in your mouth? I mean, this thing is hard to control. It's, it's out of control. Mm. Write this down. Your life moves in the direction of your words. Your life moves in the direction of your words. By a show of hands, how many of you guys have ever ridden a horse before? Oh, that's pretty dang good. That's pretty much most of you guys. This may shock some of you, but I'm somewhat of a country boy myself. I don't know why you're laughing at that, y'all. Huh? Yeah. That's me. I had just taken off my Wranglers before they took this picture. That'll be in your image for a while, won't it? <laughs> we better take that down. That's... 2006? Man, I see why you fell in love with me, babe. We met in 2006. Yeah, but we met in 2006 and... Huh? That's all she wrote right there, y'all. When she saw those 90s tattoos, it was over. Kids, think about the tattoos you put on yourself, okay? They may be cool now, but I'll tell you what. Well, now you're saying amen. <laughs> How many remember when tribal tattoos were cool? I don't know if they were everywhere. Let's just be honest. You want to see the picture of my, the one on my back? Okay, we're moving on. Um, oh, Sarah says, I got to tell everybody I'm joking. I don't have anything <laughs> tattooed on my lower back. But if you do, I mean, no, I mean, no condemnation, right? I'm moving on, literally. Uh, one of the most important things 
if not the most important things when you ride a horse is what? (laughs) For those of you who are watching online, somebody yelled out in the sanctuary, hold on. I mean, that is a great point. I would say the reins. You can ride without a saddle. I know some people are good enough to ride without reins, but how many know reins are important? The reins is what let the horse know which way to go and when we're going to start and when we're going to stop. If you want the horse to go in a certain direction, how many know you use the reins to do that? It's the same thing with a boat. You can have this big boat, but this tiny rudder determines which direction the the boat is about to go. Big boat, small rudder. The Bible tells us our tongue is like the reins on a horse and the rudder on the boat. And then what we read in James, and what he said, right? He said that it's like the reins and it controls the direction, and then it says the rudder controls the direction or the course of the ship. So in other words, you and I, the tongue controls the direction of our lives. Write this down. Our tongues have the power to determine what direction our lives go. Think that. Our tongues have the power to determine what direction. Our... You better start saying it because that's good. Our tongues have the power to determine what direction our lives go. And everybody said? Okay. If your life is headed in the wrong direction then I encourage you to look at those areas in your life that you've been, words you've been speaking over that. The second reason I believe the words are so important, I love this one. I hope this blesses you like it blesses me. Number two, the tongue is a fire. Remember we read that, right? And I told you it really jumped out at me. What an interesting verse and what an interesting point, right? <laughs> the tongue is a fire. Turn to your neighbor and say, the tongue, and say it like with a, with an accent to it, like a, your tongue has a fire. <laughs> it feels a lot more powerful that way. Maybe not. I know that may sound like a weird point, but let me explain to you what I mean. More importantly, what I should say, what I believe the Bible is meaning when he says that our tongues are a fire. Remember, a few minutes ago we read in James. So let me show you James 3, 5 through 6. Look on the screens and it says this. And so the tongue is a small part of the body, yet it carries great power. Just think of how a small flame can set a huge forest ablaze. And this last word in verse 6 says this, what? And the tongue is a fire. As I studied that, I started thinking about that. So we can see a couple things from this verse. It says this, we can see that Our tongue carries great power. A small flame can set a huge forest on fire. And lastly, our tongues are a fire. Any history people in here? Anybody who loves history? Raise your hand. Anybody love history? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some of you are unsure. Okay, that's okay. Little unknown fact. I actually love history. And so I was thinking about this. Anyone ever heard of the Great Chicago Fire? Well, raise your hand, Great Chicago Fire. Oh, look at you guys. That's pretty good. The Great Chicago Fire, for those of you who don't know, took place in 1871. I said 18, not 19. In 1871, and check this out, it lasted for three days. It destroyed over three square miles in Chicago. It killed over 300 people left over 100,000 people homeless, and it caused approximately $200 million in damage. If that same fire took place today, it was estimated that it would cause at $4.7 billion with a B worth of damage if you compare it to today's dollar. That's just to show you how powerful that fire was, 4.7 billion billion dollars worth of damage. It was started 
by a lantern being tipped over in a barn. Small fire. Isn't that what we just read? Isn't that interesting? It's almost like Jesus knows what he's talking about. Huh? What do you say? A small flame can set what? Three square miles was started by a lantern. And then he says, our tongues are like a fire. So here's the point I'm trying to make. Write this down. Your tongue has the power to cause great damage in your life. Your tongue has the power to cause great damage in your life. Worship team, you go ahead and join me back on stage. I want to close this morning with a few thoughts and a couple of scriptures. Greg, can you throw James 3, 5, 6 back up on the screens, please, if you don't mind? I want to illustrate this enough. It says that, verse 6 says, the tongue is a fire. Remember, that's my point this morning. Point number two is, your tongue is a fire. Turn to both your neighbors and say, your tongue is a fire. And then turn to your person behind you and say, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Let me tell you what I believe what he's saying here when he tells us that our tongues is a fire. How many know fires can either be a good thing or a bad thing? A fire, think about this. A fire can be used to warm your home and create a very inviting environment. One of my and Sarah's favorite things to do is to go outside on our back porch, start a fire, and watch TV. Anybody like just being around a fire? Huh? Raise your hand. Go ahead. If you enjoy a nice fire, yeah, look at that. Everybody in here. We all enjoy a nice fire. We're going to have a bonfire night one night apparently. Who wants to come to a bonfire? Wow. We all agreed on something else. Here's what I started thinking about that fire. As much as we all enjoy it, how many know that same fire, listen to me, if not contained properly, has the potential to burn my house down and cause a significant amount of damage to my life? The same fire that I'm enjoying with my wife, holding hands, enjoying the moment, has the poten same potential to bring destruction in my life. If it's not properly contained, your tongue has the ability to destroy things in your life if you don't learn to contain it. It has the ability to bring life, the Bible says in Proverbs 8, 21, 20, but it also has the power to destroy things. It's just like a fire. Man, that's good teaching. If I don't say so myself. Ephesians 4, 29 says this. When you talk, don't say anything bad, but say the good things that people need. Whatever will help them grow stronger, then what you say will be a, will be a what? To those who hear you. This to me is the modern day version of the New Testament of Proverbs 18.21 power of life and death. He says right here, when you talk, don't say anything bad. That's death. But when you do speak, say the things that people need to hear. What does your wife need to hear? What does your spouse need to hear? What does your children need to hear? Huh? What does your employees need to hear? What does your employer need to hear? Huh? What do your friends need to hear? Out of those 16,000 words a day, are you speaking life? Or are you speaking death over your situation? Stand to your feet. I believe if we're going to move forward and experience all that God has for us, these are two keys that you're going to have to do. The first one's from last week is this. We're going to change the way you think. Remember, this whole series is about moving forward. 
putting our stuff behind us and moving forward. The first way we're going to do that, change the way that we think. The second way we're going to do that, change the way we speak. Now, if you come back next week, we're going to give you the third key of how you move forward. And it's going to be good, so make sure you're here. Change how we think. Change how we speak. If you'll begin to do those things, you can begin to move forward. Sarah, Becca, Brayden, Ashley, go ahead and come on down front. We're going to go back into worship and have a time of prayer. I want you to encourage you to come down front. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. One of our core values here at REACH is this. We believe in prayer. We believe prayer makes a difference. If you're going through a situation or you know somebody who is going through a different situation, guess what? We want to create an environment every time that we get together where you can step out of your seat, have somebody come to agree with you like the Bible says. If two or more agree on anything, it shall be done. So here in just one moment, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to go back into worship. And if you need prayer for anything, I want to encourage you. Listen, the devil can't keep you from thinking anything. The devil can't keep you from speaking. And the devil can't keep you in your seat. Only you can. You have the power to choose to get out of your seat in just a moment and have somebody pray with you. It's a choice. I would be shocked to think that in a congregation this size that there's not many people who are going through something right now. But my question is, are you going to keep your pride from keeping you from coming down? Or are you going to lay it down and say, you know what? God, I need you to move in my life. So I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to invite you to come down and let us pray with you and for you. And then we're going to go back in to worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for this time we can speak truths found in your word. Holy Spirit, I pray that you can bring these things back to our remembrance, Lord God. Help us to change the way that we think. Help us to change the way that we speak, Lord God, to understand that our life, our words have power to speak life and death. God, from this day forward, we'll begin to learn to speak life, God. As we move into this time of prayer, Holy Spirit, I pray, God, that you would move in this place. I pray people would step out of their seats, Lord God, and they would come down. As they come and they take that step of faith, God, I pray that you'd meet them right where they're at. I pray this in Christ's name. Everybody said...
right now our country is in the midst of a little bit of let's call it what it is chaos and come Wednesday we're voting in a new president not excuse me not voting in we're installing a new president and I'm not here to debate whether one didn't win all that stuff and I'm here to debate whether Republican Democrat all that stuff because we can state the obvious we know that God's not a Republican and God's not a Democrat amen our hope should never be anybody in office my hope is in Jesus Christ alone yet at the same time the Bible admonishes you and I to pray for our leaders for those who are over us that we may live a life of peace right it didn't say if you're a person you voted for, then you pray for them. It says we're to vote, we're for to pray for the people who are in our office. And so we need to take just a few moments and lift up our nation. President-elect Joe Biden will step into an office come this Wednesday, and how many know God can and will use him? Because here's what I believe, and you may disagree, and that's completely fine. God's sovereign. I believe it. Now, that doesn't take away from the facts that you and I still have choices to make, like voting, praying, giving, all those things. We can't just take the sovereignty of God and sit back and say, okay, God's sovereign, you do whatever you want to do. How I many know oh, that's not what the Bible teaches? I believe the Bible teaches both. God is sovereign, yet there's actions that we need to do. And so just for a moment in this service, whether you're watching online I want for us to pray for our nation to pray for our president to pray for the Congress because all this stuff is going on and how many know there's a lot of people who are fearful right now in our country and how many know fear is not from God it's not from God so if you would just simply close your eyes nobody moving around just for a moment and I want to take just a moment just to pray. Will you turn the lights up just a little bit in the sanctuary, please, so we can see just a bit? Keep your eyes closed. Here's what I want you to do. If you're comfortable with it, the person sitting next to you, if they live in your household, we just reach over and grab their hand? During this COVID season, we're not going to ask you to reach somebody else's hand. We don't want to make you uncomfortable. But if you're sitting next to somebody who's lived in your household, we just simply grab their hand. And we're going to pray a prayer of faith in agreement. Father, we're doing what you told us to do, God, and that's to pray. So we're sitting aside a few moments this morning, Lord God, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, as this inauguration takes place on Wednesday, as President like Joe Biden steps into the next president of the United States, Lord God, I thank you that there's a grace upon him. God, he's coming in a tumultuous time, Lord God, with things are just from the pandemic, Lord God, to racial injustices and all these different things that are taking place across our nation, Lord God. So Father, I thank you, Lord God. We lift him up. God, I pray that he would surround himself with wise counsel, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for that. And Father, I thank you. You said if anybody lacks wisdom, that if we'd ask that you would graciously and generously give it to him. God, he needs wisdom. He needs wisdom. So, God, we lift him up now, Father, and we pray that you'd give him supernatural wisdom. You'd surround him with people, Lord God, to lift up his arms. Father, our job is not to attack him. Our job is to pray for him, Lord God. Help us to understand that. Even though we disagree, we can still pray. So, Father, we thank you as he steps in. I don't think anything, even as he was a vice president, Lord God, I don't think anything can prepare you to step in to sit into that chair. He thinks he has an idea of what he's stepping into, but God, I don't think he even really understands the weight that will come upon his shoulders come Wednesday. So, Father, I pray that you would surround people with helping to lift that weight off of him, Lord God. Father, I pray for every governor, Lord God, in each one of these states that represent the United States. God, as the power has been given to them to help roll out our vaccines and all these different stuff and make decisions, Lord God, I pray that you would give them wisdom as well. 
Father, I thank you for every mayor, every city council, Lord God, every member of Congress, Lord God. I pray for supernatural wisdom to come upon them, Lord God. And Father, I speak peace and unity over our nation, Lord God. We've seen so much division and strife, Lord God. Let it come to an end, Lord God. Let us lay aside, Lord God, our differences and put America first, Lord God. And what that looks like is different for each one of us, Lord God. But we have a choice. God, help us to understand that we can disagree with people and still love people, Lord God. So God, I pray as the church, we would be a light that would lead the way. God, the church, the people we would lead, we would be the, look at the, we're that lamp that put on a hill and it would shine brightly, Lord God. And they would see that, Lord, the way to lead through this, Lord God. And I thank you for that, Lord. Just keep your eyes closed if you would. As we close out this service, we never want to assume that everybody here has made a decision for Jesus Christ. Or maybe at one time you made a decision for Jesus Christ, but since you've walked away and you're ready to rededicate your life back to him, if you're ready to make a decision, we're not going to call you down front. We're not going to do anything like that. We just simply want to pray with you. No one's looking around. We want to make this as easy as possible. Everybody has their eyes closed. If you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, ready to rededicate your life today, will you do me a favor? Just lift up your hands so we can pray for you. I see that hand. I see that hand. Yeah. Keep your eyes closed, folks. People are making decisions. Once you raise your hand, you can lay it down. Thank you. Anybody else say, that's me. I'm ready to make a decision for Jesus Christ today. Anybody else? I'm going to give you just a moment. Thank you, Father. The most important decisions that you'll ever make in your life. I'm going to give just a second. Anybody else? Say, that's me. Here's what I want to do. Just keep your eyes closed. I want to say a general prayer. I want everybody in this place, if you're comfortable with it, to say it out loud after me and make it easy as possible for those who may raise their hands. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on my behalf. Today, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Today, I ask you to make me new. I receive everything that Jesus went to the cross for. Today, I rededicate my life back to you. I will serve you from this day forward. I ask you to fill me with the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. I pray this in Christ's name. And everybody shouted, can we put our hands together, church? Come on. Two people. Come on, yeah. Well, if you made that decision, you're here in person, or if you happen to watch online, if you would do us a huge favor, simply text the word amen to the number on the screen. We want to send you some information about the decision that you made today. But we want to tell you this, we believe it's the best decision that you will ever make. And we want to say welcome to the family of God. We are so glad about that. Come on, church, we put our hands together one more time. Yeah. Let me say this. Grab a seat real quick. If you made that decision for Jesus, I want to encourage you. The next step for you, we talked about next steps a minute ago, get baptized. We're going to be baptizing people at the end of this month. And so I want to encourage you. Can you text that? Can you put that number up on the screen for us, Greg? There it is. If you want to be baptized, if you've recently made a decision for Jesus Christ, can you text the word baptism to the number on the screen? We're going to leave it up there for a second. It's simply, it's 918-558-2830. Now, if you're not tech savvy, you say, I still want to be baptized, but technology is not my thing, do us a favor. Just simply walk out to the information center as soon as service is over. We'll put your name on a paper and we will get you baptized because that's the most important thing. Can everybody shout amen to that? And if this is your first time here, we want to say thank you so much for joining us. We want to welcome you to come back and join us next week for part three of our series, Moving Forward. I do want to take a moment just to encourage you. If this is your first time here, grab that Connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you and take it out to the Information Center once service is over. We want to give you a free reach shirt. Can somebody say amen to that? 
We promise you we're not going to call you. We're not going to bug you. We just want to send you some information about our church and give you a free gift. Now, lastly, we did, we talked about worship night. Do we have that slide up there? If you are going to attend worship night, we are going to provide Andalini's pizza that night when it's over so we can end our fast correctly. Can somebody shout amen? And so we need a head count of how many people are going to be here so we know how much pizza to buy and also how many child care workers that we need. So will you guys take a moment, text the word worship to the number on the screen. That way we have an idea of how many people are going to be here. It's the last Sunday of this month, January 31st from 5 to 6 p.m. We will have child care for those who are four and under. If they're older than that, they're welcome to join us here for a time of worship. It's going to be a great night. So I encourage you to mark your calendar to be here that night because it's going to be awesome. How many of you are planning on coming to worship night? I said, how many of you are planning to come to worship night? There we go. I encourage you all to be here. It's going to be a powerful time. And lastly is this. We do, as Sarah said, have some new REACH gear out there. So we encourage you to make your way out there. We have a table set up for you. Go by, grab you some new REACH merch gear, get some of that. John Mark is going to pray for us, and then we are going to be dismissed. And I hope you guys have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you back here next Sunday. Father, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for this time that we had in your presence, Lord. Thank you. Chains are being broken. Every day, Father, this week, we have an opportunity to be your love and be the hands and feet of you, Jesus, and show your love to those around us, Lord. We thank you for your angels surrounding and protecting us in all that we do, Lord. We worship you and glorify you every day. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you for watching the Reach Church YouTube channel. Stay connected with us on Facebook and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button and share this video with a friend. You can also support the ministry by visiting reachchurch.us give to help us continue reaching and equipping people. Thanks again for watching and God bless.